Hi, I'm Jason Heath from Discover Double Bass, and I want to show you how I rosin bass bows. And it's quite different from how violinists, violists, and cellists rosin. There's a distinct technique that I like to do for bass rosining. I find that it gets a good amount of rosin on, on the bow's hair, and that it keeps my bow hairs from breaking too much. So violinists, violists, cellists, you'll see them polishing their bow like this, putting the rosin on, and that's Typically not the best technique for bass players. What, what I like to do and what a lot of bass players I know like to do is take your rosin cake, and there are lots of different great brands of rosin here, hold the rosin firmly in your hand, put the bow at the frog, so you're going to take a down bow, and with a decent amount of pressure into the rosin, put on two to three strokes. And you really want to hear the friction of the bow hair against the rosin. You don't want to be too light. I, I see very frequently beginners especially put just very light amount of rosin on and we need a serious amount of rosin to get these strings moving. Uh, so two or three strokes of a nice, fresh, sticky cake of rosin is a great way to get started. One more thing about rosining, it's a good idea to play for a few minutes before you put rosin on. You have rosin on your bow from the previous session and it's good to let it warm up and move on the strings so that you don't over rosin your bow. We don't want too, too much rosin on or we start to get a gritty sound. So warm up a little bit and then if it feels like it needs it, which I usually put at least a couple strokes on a day, uh, then just like I did from the frog to the tip, down bow motion, don't move the rosin, move the bow. And if you'd like to learn about this and many other topics about the double bass, I've got a course about them on Discover Double Bass and the full details are listed below.